the most interesting team to me would be the Dallas Cowboys. All right, it's the rear report for September the 6th. We have now one game down, 271 to go in the 2024 regular season. And that's where we're going to start today's brief report. My first topic concerns the Chiefs 27 to 20 win over the Baltimore Ravens, the rematch of the AFC Championship game between the champions of the NFC of the AFC North and the two-time defending Super Bowl champions. And I think the biggest thing to take from this one is that these teams really aren't what they're going to be a month from now, two months from now, three months from now. And I think we saw that play out in a very real way on the field at Arrowhead Stadium. Let's start with the team that won, the Chiefs. You saw the vision, little glimpses of the vision for where Kansas City wants to go this year and how they're going to change from where they were the last couple of years. It's been three off seasons now since they traded Tyree Kill. Obviously, it didn't kill them as a team. They won back-to-back titles since trading Hill, but it did change who they were offensively a little bit. And it wasn't without reason that they did what they did. They were seeing a lot of too high coverages a couple of years ago. Um, that took away the big play, and they wanted to combat that by going with bigger receivers who could run after the catch and 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 slice open defenses in those big wide open spaces that were created by those coverages. This year, this offseason, they've sort of wound the clock back and they're trying to become what they were in the early days of Patrick Mahomes being their quarterback. And so um, we saw some glimpses of that vision last night with the way that Xavier Worthy played. He scores on his first NFL touch. He has a touchdown catch as well. Um, and, you know, more than just that, you saw the big play element that he should bring to what they're trying to do um, globally, offensively, and bringing that element back to the offense that was there back when they had Tyree Kill on the team and before that, Sammy Watkins. So how is that going to manifest? Well, it's going to manifest over time with Xavier Worthy getting more reps and then Hollywood Brown getting back in the lineup. And this is something that we talked about back in the summer. Um, one thing that was really clear um, in, in the way the Chiefs put the team together and the way they put the offense in particular together is that they wanted to not only create those big plays with Hollywood and with Xavier Worthy, but they wanted to use those two players to, again, create more space underneath so the guys who they have that can run, run after the catch have a better opportunity to do that. Sort of the old dynamic you used to see almost 20 years ago now between Randy Moss and Wes Welker, where Randy Moss is going downfield and Wes Welker is taking advantage of all the space he's creating. So they're, they they want to do that eventually with Worthy and Brown on the outside and then Rashi Rice and Travis Kelsey on the inside. Again, you got a glimpse of it last night, but it was with a rookie who's still learning his way and it was without Hollywood Brown out there. So as good as the Chiefs offense looked at times, I'm here to tell you there's a good chance it's going to be even better when it's fully formed six, eight, ten weeks from now. As for the Ravens, um, there's no question that their offensive line was the biggest question on the roster coming into training camp. They feel good about where their offensive line is, but that does not mean there weren't going to be hiccups. Now, the good news is they've got a couple of very solid foundation pieces in left tackle, Ronnie Stanley, who had his issues staying on side yesterday, but still a really good left tackle, and center Tyler Linderbaum. Where the growth is needed is everywhere else. 60% of the offensive line that they started in the AFC title game was not out there on Thursday night. Kevin Zeitler's in Detroit, John Simpson, and Morgan Moses are with the Jets now. And in their places are guys that have been developed through the system. And the Ravens have a ton of confidence in their ability to develop guys through the system, but that does not mean there's not a learning curve when a guy becomes a starter for the first time. So for Daniel Falele and Andrew Voorhees at guard and and and, and for Roger uh, Rosen, Rosengarten on, uh, at right tackle, it's going to take some time. And it's going to take some time for the five guys to learn to play together. They had such a veteran group last year and so much experience on that offensive line there's going to be a difference in the way it's going to look early on this year. I would trust and believe in what the Ravens are doing and their ability not only to draft and develop, but identify the guys that they believe have earned the right to start. So I think Rosengarten and Falele and Voorhees will all go there. It just might take a little bit of time to get there, and it might look a little different for the first few weeks of the season than it will when we get to November and December. Topic number two. 
Um, there are still some lingering quarter, uh, contract situations out there. One got tied up today with Jalen Ramsey doing a contract adjustment with the uh, with the, with the Miami Dolphins that puts them back in line with what the top corners in football make. I'd say the biggest one that's sitting out there undone and 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 could be a factor in the way that Week One is played is Jamar Chase's situation in Cincinnati. I think there's a deal to be done there. I think there's a deal to be done there in the next 24 hours. Whether or not it gets done, I'm not sure. I'd be more 50-50 on that. But in so many ways, the C.D. Lamb deal getting done in Dallas a couple of weeks ago, and we'll get to C.D. a little more in depth here in a minute, but the C.D. Lamb deal getting done in Dallas really simplified the situation in Cincinnati. The reason why is because Justin Jefferson's deal truly was an outlier. And Jamar Chase had waited in the early parts of the offseason to see what his buddy Justin Jefferson, they were teammates at LSU, got. They were in communication the whole time. And his goal was always to set Justin Jefferson's deal as a standard off which he could do his own deal. The problem was it was done, that deal was done at a level so far beyond what Amon Ross St. Brown and what Jalen Waddell and what Devontae Smith and what Nico Collins got earlier this offseason that the Bengals had space to say, no, that one's an outlier. That one's... That one's that one's different than the rest of them. CeeDee Lamb's deal takes that space to say those things away from the Bengals. Because CeeDee Lamb's deal isn't quite what Justin Jefferson got. But in just about every way, it's a notch below. It's actually better in the first year. They CeeDee Lamb's getting more money in the first year. But through two years, just a little bit below. Through three years, just a little bit low. On the APY, just a little bit low. On the, on the guarantees, just a little bit below. So effectively... C.D. Lamb's deal confirmed that Justin Jefferson's deal is the new market for top receivers. And I don't think anybody would argue that C.D. Lamb is in that class. So whether it's now, a year from now, the Bengals are going to have to pay at that rate. And the reality is, if they pay, if they want to pay him six months from now, nine months from now, a year from now, it's going to be more expensive than it is today, which I think is a motivating factor for the Bengals to get something done now with their star receiver, tie that thing up. You're pairing him with Joe Burrow long term. And you can focus on what should be a fantastic season for the Bengals coming off of what was a disappointing year last year after Joe Burrow got hurt. Finally, topic number three, the most interesting team to me would be the Dallas Cowboys going into week one. Um, I look at where Dallas is and there's even for them a lot going on, right? You've got Mike McCarthy in a contract year. You've got CD lamb having missed training camp. You have, Dak Prescott's contract situation lingering out there. You have, I mean, on the next level down, you have Micah Parsons playing a new defense. You have Mike Zimmer taking over for Dan Quinn. There is there is just a ton of moving parts with the Dallas Cowboys. And they open on Sunday in Cleveland in the standalone Fet Fox game against a Cleveland Browns team that now has a healthy Deshaun Watson and made, won 11 games last year with five different quarterbacks. So I think we're going to get actually a, a pretty real barometer on where the Cowboys are right now and where the Cowboys could be going in week one. How together do they look? How sharp does Dak look? Does CD play the full boat of snaps? How does Micah Parsons look? How is he being deployed? These are all questions that, again, I think with most teams, we have to be patient, but these are all questions that we should at least get a little peek into in week one against a really good Cleveland team. And so I, I think seeing how the next 24 to 48 hours go with the Dak Prescott negotiation, obviously that's something to keep your eye on. But right there on that game field, I think we are going to get some answers on where the Cowboys are now and maybe where they could be going in 2024. And with that, the season's here. We got a game tonight in Brazil. We got a full slate on Sunday. We got Jets and Niners on Monday. We'll be back to wrap it all up on Tuesday. Um, with a brand new Breer Report where we'll recap the whole weekend. Enjoy the beginning of the NFL season, everybody. 